Uh, hey there, everybody. Uh, this is Jay. Um, you guys probably don't know me as well as you probably know uh, Fleck, Tarn, and Sev, but uh, I am one of the earlier members for uh, Red Team here in the U.S. Uh, I'm also the team tech. So um, Fleck, Tarn wanted me to start doing videos on uh, basic techs, uh, tech work, uh, upgrades, um, and at the same time I kind of want to go over exactly how I uh, tech our guns in the team specifically. Uh, so today I'll be using Flectarn's Mark 18 as an example. Uh, this is the, the Mark 18 you commonly see him using in videos. It's a, it's a VFC base, nothing really too special about it. Externals are just about the same as you'll see on every Mark 18. Uh, he's got a 5.53 KAC flip up sights, uh, pack box, tango down grip, uh, KAC can, and a car 15 stock. Extremely basic. Uh, just like every Mark 18 out there, really. Um, as far as the internals go, though, it's certainly not like any stock gun uh, that you'll find. Uh, we do a lot of modding uh, to our stuff uh, on the team. Um, specifically, we do actually have one team-only mod that we do, and it's a, it's a hop-up mod pretty similar to the R-Hop. Uh, that was developed in-house by one of our teammates. Uh, works pretty well, actually. We've been able to get about 300, uh, 300 feet uh, accurate groupings with it. So uh, it's definitely one of our, our more special features that we do to all of our guns. But besides that, uh, I put a lot of tech hours into my, uh, into, uh, my team's guns. Uh, Flectarns is certainly no exception. His I've probably spent the most time on uh, just because I've tweaked so many things with it before. Um, the basic overview of what I do to each gun though is uh, I improve compression. I'll replace springs to get it up to a range of 375 to 400 feet per second. Um, I always, always, always put a MOSFET in uh, the guns that are going to be using lipo, uh, lipo batteries, mainly because uh, I am a firm believer in the fact that a gun is never lipo ready if it doesn't have a MOSFET in it. You'll end up burning out your trigger contacts. Uh, that's never a good thing, of course. Um, but the main benefit is uh, extremely fast trigger pulls, so um, we're able to get similar to full auto um, speed just with uh, semi-auto trigger pulls. Uh, other than that, you know, basic shimming. Uh, on VFCs I always take out those terrible self-shimming gears that VFC seems so fond of for some reason. Um, uh, in Fleck uh gun we put a Lonex A2 motor. Uh, it's a really great motor. It's extremely quiet. It's one of the contributing factors to why his AEG is so quiet in all of our videos. Um, so besides shimming and stuff like that, another thing that's commonly overlooked is uh, angle of engagement with the piston and uh, motor height for the motor inside the pistol grip. Uh, a lot of people don't really look at those and I spend uh, a lot of time personally trying to perfect those two things specifically on all of our AEGs. Uh, so today specifically what I'll be doing with Black Tarn's gun is opening up the internals and addressing an issue he's been having where the uh, the FBS has been slowly dropping over time, uh, not because of spring compression, uh, mainly due to the MOSFET that we have in here. We have an AWS Raptor FET, uh, but things like the actual compression of the gun, um, silicone grease might be you know, wearing thin due to friction, it evaporates just like any other liquid in the world. Um, there also just might be an issue of general uh, generally just needing a re-greasing inside the gearbox. So uh, today I'll be actually giving you a full overview of what I've done internally to this gun and uh, just some basic maintenance for it. So uh, stay tuned and you'll be able to see everything. Uh, okay, so I finally got the gearbox opened up. Um, basically the only uh, issue with Flectarn's gun losing uh, FPS is as you can see, there's almost no grease left in this gearbox. Uh, it's just gotten dry, which is known to happen. It's, it's certainly not a big deal. 
Um, all you really need to do is take uh, white lithium grease and spread it around inside the gearbox. Uh, you can use different types of grease. White lithium grease is just uh, what I prefer to use. I have it on hand just about uh, every time I'm doing tech work and you know it's relatively cheap. You can pick it up just about any Home Depot or auto parts store. But all you need to do is, is spread a liberal amount on. Uh, certainly don't go as insane as a lot of those Chinese gun manufacturers do and just load it into the gearbox. Uh, mainly just because it's nasty and it's not going to do anything beneficial. So just make sure that you get both sides plenty. Uh, not really much to it besides just spreading it in. If you have any ex excess, you can just uh, take like a Kleenex or shop towel, paper towel, whatever you have lying around, and just wipe out the excess. It's certainly not a big issue if you do have some excess in there after you're done spreading it first. I always think the hardest thing about taking a gearbox is trying to keep the, the wiring harness in place because uh, particularly with the Raptor FETs that most of us use, the, the wires like to, to pop out a little bit. But I mean that's that's pretty much all there is to it when you're you're greasing a gearbox. You just kind of find the, the spots where you know there's going to be friction and put grease on it. It's about one of the most simple things that you can do uh, to a gearbox and it's certainly one of the areas you should start when you're learning how to tech, you know, you learn how to, to shim and re-grease. Most factory uh, AOE is, is fine right off the bat uh, until you get a bit more advanced. Uh, but I mean, the, the shimming on the gears was perfectly fine. Uh, AOE with the gears was perfectly fine. Um, uh, one thing I forgot to mention earlier that I do with all the uh, guns on the team is uh, I add a sorbethane pad to the cylinder head, uh, mainly because a lot of stock guns like to use a metal cylinder head, and the little, uh, I think it's called a neo pad that they put on the, the front of it doesn't do anything really. It doesn't help decrease wear. Um, but uh, the sorbethane pad certainly does. Uh, it also helps it keep it a bit quieter just because it's not slapping against uh, a hard, flat object. It, you know, has a, a nice bit of cushion to it. Uh, it's pretty easy to install, too. You can get them. Uh, like, the most popular ones are made by a company called Scatterplot. Uh, most of us get ours from a clandestine airsoft uh, it's a pretty decent retail site. Uh, as far as you know, any other teching in the gearbox goes, it it all depends on your your target goal. Uh, I suppose is what it would be as to where um, you know you determine what you want your gun's limits to be. If you want it to push 400 FPS, you usually fine with stock internals, maybe a spring upgrade, shim, regrease, correct AOE, that's about all there is to it. Uh, if you're wanting to push it up to 400 FPS, you obviously want a high torque motor, high torque gears. Uh, you'll want things, um, uh, you'll probably want to replace the piston, uh, not to an all metal piston, uh, people will commonly make that mistake. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to become more durable. Uh, just pick a piston that is just more durable in general. Uh, one of my favorites to use is actually the uh, the classic uh, the classic army blue piston. Pretty plain, not a not a whole lot to it other than the fact that the the plastic on it is just like a really good, nice hard plastic. Uh. I shouldn't have said that the only thing I found wrong inside the gearbox was uh, 
the the lube and grease uh, the compression was a a bit off mainly just because the uh, piston head had dried out a lot but other than that I mean you know shim job was fine everything else was was in good shape uh, usually you shim once you'll never need to shim again uh, especially if you did it 100% uh, to your best ability the first time it, it's never really needed to be done again unless some kind of circumstance changes where you you added something new into your gearbox or uh, you need to, to look at AOE and maybe change that but there's generally not too much to do after you've uh, you've done a full upgrade and gotten everything to uh, a good level of functioning uh, but I mean that's about all that there was to do inside of uh, the gearbox this time it was pretty simple um, Definitely look forward to more videos. Uh, I, I do tech work a lot. Um, you'll probably end up seeing me doing high speed setups for our uh, team's Mark 46. You'll certainly see me doing high FPS setups for our team's DMR. And um, one of our guys uh, has an SPR that he just got, so I'll be completely overhauling that gearbox as well. Um, don't forget to, you know, like and subscribe. Uh, you know, check out our Facebook page if you want any more uh, details on how our kits are going. Uh, specifically, I'll be doing gun updates and stuff like that as a, a content creator for the page. But, uh, you know, thanks for checking out the video. Uh, we'll see you next time.